welcome back. Uh, we have been uh, discussing on helium ion microscope, particularly for imaging, surface imaging, create uh, knowing uh, that means finding the surface topology. And in our last last lecture, we also have seen how uh, helium ion microscopy along with SIMS can be used for measuring the composition uh, or elemental composition and chemical analysis can be done with a helium ion microscope attached with a SIMS. Uh, today, in uh, the, as a last lecture uh, on helium ion microscope, uh, we will discuss. I will discuss uh, what ex additional things that you can do uh, in a helium ion microscope. Whether you can create uh, features uh, of nano size, uh, nano size, or you can deposit a features of nano size uh, using a helium ion microscope. So that is what we will see how these ions can be used to mill the surface of the specimen and create the structures of the desired size and for that what parameters need to be uh, controlled and also how one can deposit certain materials on the specimen uh, to uh, a desired size and shape. So, modification of the materials using uh, helium uh, ion microscope uh, is uh, uh, not new because uh, we know um, uh, until helium ion microscope uh, con come to prominence, um, we have a scanning electron microscope more uh, many uh, um, at, uh, several uh, decades uh, before uh, scanning electron microscope have been also been attached with uh, ions uh, for uh, uh, this lithography purpose or ion milling purpose, particularly gallium ions have been used for uh, several years now uh, to create uh, um, features to a, uh, to a size in the micron or sub micron levels. So, in that respect uh, helium ion microscope also capable of doing it uh, with a much finer size as you will see here uh, in today lecture. So, we can certainly modify the materials uh, using uh, an ion beam uh, through milling or through deposition. So, first is that because uh, a focused ion beam is placed on the specimen that is why we say it is a focused ion beam uh, F i b uh, and it can uh, produce nanostructure of desired shape and size. One can also do the selective deposition of noble gases ions using the noble gases ion uh, if uh, suitable precursor are available. Uh, we can do the etching using the reactive ions and we can do the patterning and also other such application uh, using ion microscope. So, in, in our uh, uh, microscope, ion microscope uh, ions are bombarded on the specimen uh, a fine spot a fine beam of ions bombarded on the specimen solid surface and that lead to uh, many different uh, processes. Uh, we have seen in the, our last lecture that would uh, Sputtering can be occurred, sputter of target atoms can be done, and by sputtering the uh, atoms from the surface, we can create or create a pattern on the specimen, resulting in direct patterning of the sample can be done. It can also generate excited surface atoms, uh, which uh, have no enough energy to be sputtered out, but still they can influence in certain uh, to create uh, to fulfill certain objective. Because ion beam is striking on the specimen, it can do the local heating and that thermally dissociate and lead to local uh, chemical vapor deposition of the specimen that can be done. It can certainly damage the target material and also implant the inc incident ion that we would like to uh, implant and it can also uh, help in producing electromagnetic radiation, uh, radiation that is nothing but ion illumination. So, all these things can be uh, can happen in a ion solid interaction. If we look at uh, the, we have been previously discussing on the interaction volume. So, in that interaction volume uh, is nothing but we have been discussing for electrons and ions uh, as uh, like a teardrop shape. This is our interaction volume, we have been discussing only one thing, and uh, from this region, uh, the signal situation that comes that is secondary electrons has been used for imaging purpose. But now, first time we are coming with a uh, primary and secondary sputter volume. Uh, sputtering will occur certainly at where first it is uh, ion or electron beam is incident. 
sputtering will be less with electrons certainly, but with ions because it is little heavier mass sputtering will occur. More heavier the ions, more sputtering will occur. And that region from, from where it first bombard on the specimen, this is a primary sputter volume, primary sputter volume. And this is what the primary sputter volume almost like. If we look at the different ions compared with different ion helium, neon, argon, xenon, then uh, xenon or also krypton is there. So, all these different ions, what we can see that for helium, uh, this is this is one, this is primary volume, primary sputter, sputter volume and this is secondary sputter volume. This primary sputter, vol uh, sputter volume is smallest area uh, of around like it is around like uh, maximum 5 nanometer, maximum 5 nanometer. And the secondary uh, um, if we um, combine the primary uh, sputter volume and secondary sputter volume, then it goes to quite large for this black color helium ion microscope one. But if we go to heavier mass more than argon, uh, more than argon, let us say more than argon, argon is a green color one, it is almost like green, almost uh, above the garbon, uh, uh, argon, we have almost like one one interaction volume, there is no primary and secondary, it cannot be different, the primary and secondary uh, uh, interaction volume cannot be differentiated. So, what happens exactly? As we know, uh, once uh, once there is uh, uh, let us say primary incident beam is uh, primary ions is incidenting on this specimen. So, from near the surface, this is around 5 nanometer, let us say 5 nanometer, that is around 5 nanometer that is the primary interaction uh, primary interaction volume we can say primary interaction volume interaction volume from those places we get secondary electron one and i will write here isc because here it is uh, ion induced and from that region also we have backscattered ion bsi we have also backscattered ion and we can we can also spot away some of the atom we can also have spotter atom all this can happens from there from the region where that strikes the beam so now that uh, ions can go inside can go inside and some helium can be incorporated into the lattice in the specimen and it can go as deep as like uh, as leap as 300 nanometer, it can go, go down and while it com comes out, this is this can come out here also. So, this can be uh, after uh, after it is uh, changing its trajectory, some of the things uh, spotted uh, target ion. So, when it comes out from this region, you know our secondary electron 2 comes out, secondary electron 2 come out and the yield of the secondary electron 2 with a helium ion microscope we know very low, very low compared to the scanning electron microscopy cases. When in case of scanning electron microscopy cases, we say it is a backscattered electrons, when backscattered electrons comes out of the specimen, they also produce secondary electrons that we uh, name as SE 2. So, here also we name it is SE 2 or you can write IAC 2. SE2. So, now in this region also we can have a spotted atoms, spotted target atoms all this can happen and this happens in a depth of few nanometer from the surface and now this region, now this region is our secondary, secondary spotter volume, secondary spotter volume, this is the secondary spotter volume which are which is really much larger, relatively larger are around um, 300 to 500 nanometer compared to uh, the primary interaction volume, primary spotter volume which is very small. So, then uh, this will occur uh, for, for the helium, but as you see for the argon above, uh, above argon uh, uh, atoms which are heavier, we see only one region, only one region that is because, because their mass is higher their, uh, their uh, momentum will be higher producing a uh, little certainly uh, here you can see the difference helium giving a very 
helium giving a very small spot size here. Unlike the cases as you see as you increase the uh, mass of the ions, they cannot beam range become less, they cannot penetrate much deeper into the specimen and also that lateral direction also increases as you go to higher mass the lateral direction also keep on increasing. So, in these cases like above argon we have only one type of interaction volume on the other hand here as these are going these are secondary interaction volume and secondary spotter volume. So, this sputtering what influence this type of sputtering are milling? So, first thing is the uh, material properties mass of the target atom and its elemental composition. So, the uh, as per the elemental composition and mass the interaction volume will also change uh, it also depends on the density all these things will change. Similarly, uh, if the composition uh, is uh, it may have a composition where some of the atoms can be easily spotted away while other uh, spotted atoms other atoms may not be easily spotted away. If that happens then what will happen uh, there will be non stoichiometry in the specimen the atoms which are easily spotted away can go away creating a non stoichiometry. So, these are the effect of mass of the target atom and its elemental composition. Crystal energy and crystal orientation like if uh, the crystal orientation aligned with the ion beam then more channeling occurs we have seen. So, because of channeling ion beam will penetrate much deeper into the specimen and therefore, less number of uh, less chance of spotter, uh, spotter, uh, sputtering to occur. So, that is effect of the crystallinity. So, crystallinity and crystal orientation when changes the sputtering will also change and milling effect will also, also vary. Third thing is surface morphology, surface morphology nothing but the creation of 3D features. When incident beam strikes to the specimen at a normal incidence and uh, at an angle norm, normal to the specimen, then the sputtering amount of the atoms will not be same when the angle is different. So, as the surface morphology changes where the tilt angle automatically changes on the specimen, thus uh, milling performance will also change. Fourth thing is uh, uh, electrical conductivity. So far, most of the studies have been done with the uh, conducting sample or metallic sample uh, because anyway helium ion microscopy is quite new in the history it is all, all not more than uh, 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 approximately 15 years now. Uh, as most study done with metallic sample uh, it has been found that uh, electrically conductive sample is good. On the other hand if the sample is not electrically conducting what will happen that there can be some charge development or local charge development or potential development at the surface and that can uh, affect the trajectory of the spotted atoms or electron uh, incident ions. So, electrical conductivity also plays a uh, role uh, for uh, milling. About the incident ions certainly mass of the ions is more more sputtered uh, more sputtering will occur or more milling will occur easily. Energy of the ions certainly energy of the ions as the energy of the ion increases the sputtering yield increases uh, sputtering rate increases angle of incident is nothing but the uh, same thing sur surface of uh, surface morphology the angle between the uh, incident ions and the sample surface tilt angle also will influence the milling of this specimen. Uh, here you see an example of uh, uh, nano structuring of the gold film uh, using a helium ion microscope. Uh, here um, uh, this is a um, gold film of thickness uh, 50 nanometer uh, and it is milled uh, uh, of size uh, around 25 nanometer to 25 nanometer region uh, was milled producing a chessboard type of pattern, uh, chessboard type of pattern creating a uh, features like square type of feature, pillar type of features uh, of the gold film. And in the right side uh, what you see uh, there are trenches, trenches are done, uh, drawn uh, of uh, uh, different depth, different depth. Um, these are more depth than the left side one uh, by changing the dodge uh, the ion dodge uh, ion dodge on the specimen with a 10 nanometer period. So, uh, what we have seen here uh, these are of size uh, approximately 5 nanometer which is very small if we compare the patterning of the structure. Uh, so, far none of the techniques available uh, which can produce such small features by milling uh, as that what you see here with a helium ion microscope. Uh, the different trench depth, trench depth can be changed as you see in the left side uh, the depth is less 0 0.5 nanometer to 10 nanometer. So, which illustrate the possibility of creating th creating 3D structure 
with direct focused ion beam sputtering. So, it is done by varying the exposure dodge. By varying the exposure dodge, we could create 3D features, 3D structure of very finer size up to less than 5 nanometer, which no other techniques provides at present. Uh, here is another example of sputtering yield of the helium ions as, as the dodge, uh, the incident dodge of helium ion changes, the sputtering yield will change. In the left side, you see a helium ion microscopy image uh, where uh, a dots or a pores uh, are created by uh, milling uh, uh, with a different dodge, uh, dodge of the helium ions. Uh, in the when we go to uh, in downward direction, the dodge uh, uh, number uh, dodge numbers are increases uh, from twice, and in the in the uh, in the horizontal direction also it increases uh, like one, two, three, four, five. In this manner, it can be in increased um, uh, increased. And what we see here, and he, this is the AFM image, atomic force microscopy image, uh, and that providing uh, the um, uh, the portion where it is a red circle, uh, and in the right side you see how the dodge effect on the milling depth, milling depth, milling depth was measured by atomic force microscope. As we see, uh, as, as we increase the uh, dodge, milling depth uh, increases and then becomes saturated after a certain. Uh, dodge. So, uh, in another important features one, one can see, you can see here for example, when dodge is increases you see in the, uh, uh, around the pores there is a brighter uh, uh, region, brighter region means more number of uh, secondary, electron, secondary electrons are emerging from the region, region that is due to the swelling, swelling occurs uh, uh, around the milling area, swelling occurs around the milling area when the dodge uh, helium ion dodge increases uh, uh, above a certain threshold value or optimum value, uh, which we can see above uh, 16, we could uh, able to see such kind of uh, swelling. And swelling occurs why? Because as helium ion penetrates into the specimen, uh, some will go and uh, stay as in the interstitial, some will outgas. But uh, when they become, they will accumulate at the surface, they will create a stress and uh, due to this stress that material will start to swell. Uh, if the uh, if the outgoing is not enough, outgoing gas is not enough, slowly, slowly they will swell and then they will crack and the crack you can see here when the dodge become very high. So, so that will happen when you cross above certain ion dodge uh, uh, that uh, you can see the swelling and uh, cracking will occur when the dodge increases above an optimum level. So, another um, example uh, that is another that is that is one of the uh, drawbacks that means when you have a much higher uh, dodge. Uh, second and uh, drawbacks or disadvantages is that long range order sputtering of helium ions can be observed experimentally when large dodge are involved. Long range order sputtering means uh, sputtering occurs much away from the specimen also as you see uh, some of the black person here, some of the black person here. The dark area yeah, uh, yeah darker region around the mill box indicate removed gold and their size is around 300 nanometer. This is this is known by AFM uh, thickness measurement. As you see here uh, in this region, uh, the thickness uh, or uh, depth is around uh, around 2 nanometer depth this region 2 nanometer depth this is a 2 nanometer and this area from here to here is around 300 nanometer. Uh, it is almost more than 300 nanometer this, this area and we have a depth that means the uh, pore depth is approximately 13 nanometer, 13 nanometer AFM profile showing indicating that though we want to mill only this small area, but some of the unwanted materials are also removed around the area of interest. This is what this is what the secondary interaction volume or secondary spotter volume. So, when uh, the helium ions go here out, it also will take out some of the uh, uh, gold atoms uh, region around the specimen. This is what the secondary spotter volume. And in this way, uh, this is one of the drawbacks though we do not want to mill this area, but automatically it will be done because of this. You, you see here an example, another example uh, creating the gold plasmonic antenna as that uh, the top uh, 
uh, top one is the gold nano rods created by uh, electron beam uh, lithography EBL and uh, then these are the uh, these are the area from where uh, from where the milling is done by helium ion microscope creating a features or gap of size as small as 3.5 nanometer as small as 3.5 nanometer and this is only possible at present with uh, helium ion microscope no other techniques. And another example here uh, what you see um, the application of uh, helium focused ion, uh, focused ion beam uh, creating the coaxial plasma in gold uh, nanostructure uh, creating uh, here um, in the left side one it is a gallium focused ion beam gallium ion beam uh, creating a 30 nanometer gap actually the, uh, the, uh, the interest to create 30 nanometer uh, gap, but it produced quite a larger uh, gap with a gallium ion uh, as compared to uh, when we do with a helium focused ion beam it, it produce exact 30 nanometer gap uh, of this coaxial nanostructure with a and, a and this region edge region are quite sharp uh, in case of helium ion, uh, helium uh, um, focused ion beam compared to the gallium focused ion beam. Gallium focused ion beam is extensively used uh, along with um, electron microscope stunning electron microscope for creating such kind of features, but as you see here uh, the creation of the structure uh, nanostructure is much more uh, efficient or precise uh, in with the helium focused ion beam and here you see one can create 8 nanometer gap with a uh, you can uh, do the milling of very small size uh, using helium ion helium ions. So, advantage of helium ion uh, focused ion beam is the main advantage uh, of uh, using uh, helium focused ion beam. Uh, in the fabrication of nanostructure of very small size with a high reproducibility and reliability reproducibility in the within the range of 1 nanometer uh, as compared to any other fabrication technique. Uh, we have seen that uh, any size shape can be designed with uh, uh, helium ion microscope uh, with an example of gold is being presented here. Uh, now, at present uh, we have uh, only helium ion microscopy that is capable enough to do such uh, nano engineering uh, of uh, size below 5 nanometer. Another uh, advantage of uh, helium or ion focused ion uh, helium focused uh, ion beam is that uh, magnetic materials can be done. Uh, when we do with electron uh, microscope or scanning electron microscope, uh, we also see the features uh, by using by bombarding the electrons at the same time, but the if the sample is magnetic in nature then uh, beam distortion occurs beam distortion electron beam distortion occurs because of the magnetic field of the magnetic sample, but the magnetic field of the sample will affect less to the ions incident ions therefore, magnetic materials can be easily uh, done the nano structuring of magnetic materials can easily be done uh, with helium ion, uh, ion as compared to the uh, that done with uh, with helium ion in helium ion microscopy as compared to the uh, to the ions in uh, electron microscopy. The then second things is uh, what we can do with again helium ion microscopy is the gas assisted deposition with noble gas ions. We can do deposition of the materials uh, use, uh, using these uh, gases uh, using these um, ions. So, intro, uh, we can uh, simultaneously introduce uh, volatile compounds so, so, as organometallic compounds, halides, halogenides uh, in small quantities into the chamber and then uh, we can deposit those on the specimen surface. As you see here, uh, here uh, we are injecting the uh, precursor material such as organometallic compound and our incident ion is coming and then uh, these precursor material will adsorb on this adsorb on the sur surface, fizzy adsorb on the surface and when, uh, when incident ion strike then what will happen? Uh, then they will interact with the uh, organic materials and they will dissociate and degrade uh, and de during the process deposition will occur on the specimen where incident ions uh, interact with the specimen and also the precursor material and producing a deposition uh, in the region of interest where ion beam is striking. Other things like volatile fragments etcetera will go away. So, accordingly one can create uh, 3D structures by selectively depositing the region of interest and uh, um, locally 
doing the dissociation and decomposition in the specimen in the inside the microscope chamber. You know, it, it can also do, it can also enhance the physical milling rate by adding compounds which locally decompose upon ion induced dissociation. It can also do like uh, we can Im, uh, increase the milling rate also by, by allowing such uh, some reactive gases that we have seen before like sesmium oxygen radicals, we can also pass them and in presence of uh, ion beams, we can also do the milling or etching that can also be done. Uh, dissociation and deposition. First, uh, uh, that uh, organometallic compounds which are coming uh, as a precursor, they will adsorb on the specimen and they will be dissociated and deposition will occur. So, that effects dissociation reaction depends on the energy of the primary ions, energy of the primary ion and generated excited surface atom. Some of the surface atoms uh, will be, uh, at, uh, some of the atoms will be generated which do not have enough. Uh, uh, energy to come out of the specimen. So, they will uh, also uh, participate in the reaction and also exiting secondary electrons. They will also participate in the reaction for the dissociation and also some temperature arises in the process. Deposition can be either reaction limited or mass transfer limited. Uh, it is reaction limited when uh, we have, uh, uh, it, we will say reaction uh, limited when uh, there is more adsorbates than dissociation. More more uh, adsorbates are available than dissociation. When it occurs, when enough number of adsorbates molecules are available or adsorbates are available, uh, then dissociation that, proce that process will be called reaction limited. When it is opposite, when more dissociation is occurring and less adsorbates is available, then it will be mass transport limited. Uh, limited uh, process of uh, deposition. The number of available adsorbates in the re uh, irradiated region depends on the four contribution like injected molecular flux like the precursor onto the substrate and the reaction zone and the desorption rate depending upon the resident time how long it will stay, uh, stay uh, of the physio absor uh, physio adsorbates, surface diffusion rates how uh, efficiently they can uh, uh, diffuse in the surface on the surface and depending upon the adsorb, uh, adsorbate mobility on the surface and dissociation rate of the adsorbates depending upon the de dissociation yield. All these factor will uh, determine uh, the, um, this, the reaction process here. And the factor that influence the deposition and, it and its rates are like uh, first is uh, pixel dwell time. Pixel dwell time is normally uh, in the uh, nanosecond, nanosecond to microsecond how long, how long our ion beam stay at one spot that is the pixel dwell time. It is nanosecond to microsecond. If it stay longer, if it is stay longer, uh, then what will happen? Deposition rate will be decreasing because when it stay longer uh, after a certain time, uh, what will do it rather than depositing, it will do itching. It will removing this specimen or sputtering over this specimen. So, uh, it will decrease the um, deposition rate when the dwell time is more. Pixel refresh time, refresh time. When uh, pixel means ion beam falls, then it gives some interval, another ion beam falls, that is the refresh time. Now, uh, during the refresh time, uh, the precursor get refilled. So, if uh, refresh time is more, then, uh, then it will increase the deposition rate. It will increase the deposition rate and then become saturated. So, it is the refresh time refresh time versus uh, deposition rate or growth rate, it will increase then it will be saturated and normally it gets saturated uh, at around the range of uh, 5 millisecond. Uh, after 5 millisecond, it gets saturated, 5 millisecond uh, saturation occurs, saturation occurs. Then pixel distance or overlap. Uh, dist distance between two pixel. Uh, uh, if you, uh, if uh, they are uh, more, uh, then again uh, it increases the deposition rate, then becomes saturates. Uh, pixel distance, uh, pixel distance increases means uh, it will be uh, increase and then become it will saturate. 
these are the different factors that influence uh, the deposition uh, deposition and its rate. Uh, we one can create uh, uh, 3D structures uh, as you see here. Uh, this is uh, this is done by taking a precursor called trimethyl meth, uh, trimethyl methyl cyclopentadienyl plati, plati, uh, platinum. Uh, a precursor is introduced into specimen, and then ion beam falls. Ion beam of different uh, current, as you see, he is taken different current 1.5 picoampere, 2 m picoampere. Uh, as you see here, uh, upon increase uh, at a lower um, um, current, beam current or prop current, uh, we can have a much sharper tip and much narrow uh, narrow uh, nano rods. This is a tilted view of the pillars, uh, tilted view of the pillars. Uh, that will produce a much uh, taller or uh, taller um, pillars with a narrow width. By upon increasing the um, current or dodge, we could see that it is the, inter, uh, the volume of the materials deposited also less because at a higher um, current uh, at, uh, enough um, uh, precursor will not be available. Whatever the current available quickly precursor is getting dissociated and deposited enough precursor cannot come quickly. And then when enough precursor is not available, then it will start milling and leaching. Therefore, the volume here decreases when you take higher current. Moreover, uh, other features uh, that means another things happen that higher higher uh, current beam current, uh, it is a wider uh, wider diameter uh, pillars that that indicates uh, that is a vertical growth. That means that is also a sideway growth here. So uh, these are uh, theoretical uh, uh, simulated cross section of the pillar. So at the center center there is a effect of uh, the deposition is due to depositor by primary ions and S E 1 at the center and uh, cent, uh, near the center. This yellow color is due to S E 1 and the red color is due to the primary ions and the lateral growth this side this side is due to first due to scattered ions the green color and finally, due to S E 2 the cyan color this color. So, this S E 2 is influence is uh, playing the role for lateral growth S E 2. On the other hand primary ions is the middle person growth and at one place you keep on uh, uh, you allow the uh, ion beam to stay at one place and you keep on growing particularly the structure. From the this precursor we could grow platinum uh, PTC platinum carbon on a silicon surface. Similarly, many other type of structures can be produced by by this uh, by helium ion microscopy purpose using the helium ion microscope. One can do also patterning local modification of the material using uh, using ion beam uh, and surface patterning can be done. In this cases as you see it is a sodium uh, chloride crystal on the sodium chloride crystals first uh, ion beam was uh, uh, was uh, uh, made to scan in a in a manner of like this of a particular size. After it gets scanned, uh, that is what the local modification is done. Then you see that is a, that is a ion on luminescence uh, uh, image, ion on luminescence image. Once the ion beam scan of this area, this area of uh, sodium chloride crystal, this region modify, get modified, or nothing but more number of defects is created because ion because of ion beam interaction. As the defects is created in this region they produce luminescence which we do not see here. The, this is a complete flat surface here you, this is a secondary electron image you see there is no change in the darkness contrast the brightness contrast. So, it is uniform there is no changes, but here you see the clear difference of the ion luminescence because though this is flat these regions have a different defects uh, concentration compared to other regions. therefore giving a different contrast this is what nothing but surface patterning or local modification of the surface using helium ion. So, in conclusion what we have seen here uh, that helium ion uh, uh, can be used for fabrication or creation of the structure by milling or deposition of size uh, smaller than 5 nanometer and we can uh, produce the structures uh, using suitable uh, precursor material. Uh, such as organometallic precursor um, and uh, for the creation of the structure different parameters can be varied judiciously. So, that you can able to create the shape and size you 
uh, desire. Uh, a higher dose would uh, lead to formation of the second uh, formation of the secondary interaction volume or spotter volume and also can create also surface damage those has to be taken care while uh, doing this fabrication uh, uh, using the helium ion microscope. Uh, these are the references. Thank you.